All right, today we are going to talk about direct variation. So our essential question, what are the key characteristics of a direct variation equation? So to start off, let's define what that means. Direct variation is basically a linear equation um, that doesn't, or it has zero as a y-intercept. So the only thing we're going to change up a little bit is that you'll notice it's not y equals mx, it says y equals ax. Um, and there is no b because direct variation equations will always pass through the origin. So you don't need to write plus zero because adding zero doesn't change anything. So again, we represent direct variation with y equals ax. A is called the constant of variation. And when you look at a graph of a direct variation equation, the slope is a, and then the y-intercept is zero. All direct variation equations will pass through the origin, and they are linear equations. So for the first example, we're going to write and graph a direct variation equation that has negative 3, 2 as a solution. So remember, in our previous slide, we said that all of them always pass through the origin. We were given the point negative 3, 2. So I'm going to plot the point negative 3, 2. And I'm going to use these two points to calculate what the slope is. I can see as I move left to right that I have to go down two spaces and to the right three. So I can just continue with that pattern. And I can also move up and to the left three. And I can connect my points. And you can tell from each of these points that the slope or the constant of variation is negative 2 over 3, negative 2 thirds. So when we write the equation in this y equals ax setup, you can just substitute negative 2 thirds in place of a. And we'll try one more example like that. Again, all direct variation equations pass through the origin. This time we were given the ordered pair, 4, negative 2. So we're going to go to the right 4 and then down 2. And then we're going to go right 4 again, down 2. And we can also, from the origin, go up 2 and to the left 4. The exact opposite direction that we just went in and connect so then again we're using this formula y equals ax a represents the slope it's the constant of variation but it's the exact same thing as the slope and for us, as we move from any point that I just drew, I can see that we went down 2 into the right 4. So negative 2 over 4. This simplifies to negative 1 half. So I can go back in if I want and plug in all the points that I was missing on the graph. All right, another thing you'll be asked to do is figure out, do I have a direct variation model or do I not? So for both of these questions, first figure out, is it direct variation? And if it is not, say why. If it is, uh, solve the equation or solve for the constant of variation. So for both of these questions, you're basically just solving for y. So I'm gonna subtract seven x from both sides. Don't forget the negative sign because we are subtracting 4y. 0 minus 7x is negative 7x. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. Two negatives will cancel. 
y equals 7 fourths x. So yes, this is a direct variation equation because it can be written in the form of y equals ax. And so our constant of variation is 7 fourths. For the second equation, we're still solving for y. We're going to divide by 2 on both sides. And you can see for this equation, this one is written in the form um, y equals mx plus b. I know it's completely flipped, but I can see what the y-intercept is for this equation. And that's 5 over 2. So for this example, it is not. Because it doesn't pass through the origin. So a shortcut. If you're looking at this and you're thinking, I see a pattern, just to kind of give you a nudge, um, if you have a constant in your equation, it's not a direct variation. Okay. Our next example, we're being asked um, to come up with our own direct variation equation direct variation equation um, based on the situation we are given. So we're given that according to Hooke's law, the force that is needed to stretch a spring varies directly with the amount the spring is stretched. If 64 pounds of force stretches a spring a distance of 8 inches, write an equation that relates D and F. We know that direct variation is always of the form y equals ax. For us, we can control how far we stretch the spring. So that means D is going to be our independent variable. So that's what we're going to put in place of X. And the force depends on how far we stretch the spring. So that's going to be our dependent variable. And what we know is that if we use 64 pounds of force F, so I'm going to substitute 64 in place of F. The spring will stretch 8 inches. And so now to solve for A, we need to divide by 8. We get a constant of variation of 8. And then we can write our equation. as F equals 8D. So we've done the hard work because now we're going to be asked a couple of questions about predicting um, either distance or force. So the first thing we're being asked is predict the amount of force that's needed to stretch the string to 14 inches. So F will equal 8 times the number of inches we need, which is 14. So when we take 8 times 14, we get 112. So now let's say that the force being applied to the spring is 92 pounds. Our job is to predict how far the spring is being stretched. So again, I'm going to write it on this slide too, F equals 8 times D. And for us, this time we're applying 92 pounds of force. So this time we get a distance of 11 and a half inches. All right, that is all for this lesson. Let us know if you have any questions.